Hello and welcome to this Brand Watch hosted webinar, Using Social to Raise Awareness and Educate a Generation. My name is Philip Agnew, I'm a Community Manager here at Brand Watch and I'll be hosting the webinar. I'm joined by Andrew Salter and Simon Tucker. Would you two like to introduce yourselves? Yes, yeah, so um, I uh, uh, am a co-founder of uh, Check One Two, and I oversee um, the digital campaign and the uh, uh, oh, it's television relationships as well. And Simon Tucker's uh, pretty much similar role as well. He's also a co-founder, um, and there's another uh, two brothers: um, my brother Simon and Simon Tucker's brother Phil. Um, so today we'll be looking at um, how Check One Two used Brandwatch to measure their movement, how to analyze and optimize the use of influencers, real-time analysis of a television broadcast, how to measure true ROI from social, and Check One Two's future. Please don't be shy. Webinars like this are fueled by audience participation. So either tweet your questions to at Brandwatch with the hashtag Brandwatch Tips, or simply ask one in the session chat. So just before we start, here's a little bit, here's a little bit about us. Brandwatch is one of the world's um, leading social listening platforms. The Brandwatch app gathers millions of online conversations every day and provides users with the tools to analyze social data from all over the globe. Now, guys, would you like to introduce um, Check One Two? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So uh, Check One Two actually started, um, or was founded a couple of years ago now. Um, it uh, originally started, uh, myself, uh, so Andrew speaking here, and my brother Simon uh, on meeting uh, a lady, uh, a mother who, um, son at the age of 18, unfortunately um, uh, developed testicular cancer after finding a lump in his testicle. Um, he was entirely unaware of what the lump was and why it was there, and being young as he is and also uh, a male specimen, uh, he decided not to talk to anyone about it, probably mainly because of uh, embarrassment, but also a lot of naivety because cancer tends to be an older man's disease or an old lady's disease, and therefore the idea of it being cancer was something that had never crossed his mind, and the embarrassment led to him not speaking to anyone about it or looking any further. Um, having left it about five to six weeks, um, it caused him, unfortunately, to lose his life at the age of 19. Um, this particular type of cancer that affects young men uh, spreads very quickly through the hormones and, and therefore unfortunately had taken his life. Had he spoken up in its early stages, uh, he would still be alive today. Uh, if you catch the cancer early, it is very treatable, pretty much uh, curable, caught early. Uh, therefore, any uh, death from testicular cancer um, is entirely needless uh, and unnecessary. Um, so after meeting um, Wendy, the mother of Matthew, um, we uh, actually took quite a, a strange response from this because although being a devastating story, it was the idea, the optimism, the positivity over it's not about money uh, in terms of solving this problem. It was about changing uh, the behavior of men towards health and cancer and understanding that just by checking yourself regularly, you can actually stop yourself dying from it. So hugely positive, and uh, as a result, we joined forces with the uh, Tucker brothers, Simon and Phil Tucker, who are responsible for a lot of television programming, big campaigns for brands, uh, a lot of online content, um, a huge success. Uh, probably the experience my brother and I lacked at the time. Um, we sort of uh, formed Check One Two together, uh, and as a result, created the... Uh, uh, the movement and campaign hashtag failing nuts uh, as a way to create as much awareness as possible for testicular cancer and, and checking your nuts and also to change the behavior of a generation of men so it was no longer embarrassing uh, and as a result uh, the campaign which uh, ended a journey on a part of a channel 4 broadcast um, but was the start of a new phase of the campaign has reached over 750 million eyeballs um, and became a global phenomena um, and behavior around testicular cancer and checking has dramatically changed so it's had not only uh, an incredible effect um, uh, amongst men it's been an entertainment success for both the world of social media and broadcasting industry um, and success around the world yeah and 
just to clarify, the webinar is going to really focus on the Feeling Nuts campaign itself and kind of the success that had. When Check One Two came to us, the Feeling Nuts movement was really growing faster than ever. They realized that in order to understand the real value of their movement, however, they needed a way to measure and compare it. Brandwatch's powerful social listening gave them the ability to not just measure and compare, but also optimize what was already a very successful campaign. Immediately, we were able to offer them a dashboard equipped with rules and categories set out to monitor exactly how well the Feeling Nuts campaign was doing. So first thing Check One Two wanted from Brandwatch was, was really a reliable way to measure the reach of the Feeling Nuts campaign. Um, they needed to learn how many people had seen it and then how many screens it had been present. Brandwatch was immediately able to show some really unique metrics behind the campaign. We saw that 861 unique posts were being uh, posted per day. Um, at this early stage, already 61,000 mentions had been made about the movement, and the hashtag Feeling Nuts had been retweeted a uh, whopping 56,000 times. However, we agreed on using a different metrics called impressions. This is the total amount of screens a tweet or hashtag has made it to. So for Check One Two, their impression looks at the amount of times their hashtag Feeling Nuts had been seen on Instagram or Twitter. The figure at the time was, was way over 100 million impressions. Clearly, the campaign was generating a huge success. And I'd like to ask you guys, Check One Two, why was the Totalizer such a, a valuable part of your movement? Um, I think it was uh, really sort of sat at the core, it still does today, uh, as the movement continues. Um, the thing that we're doing differently uh, to anyone else in sort of cause-related marketing or that has a, a cause-related message is that the idea is that the, um, the solution to this particular problem isn't about money. Um, there is sort of two sides to cancer. Uh, there is uh, prevention, uh, which is about educating people about how to find cancer early through signs and symptoms, um, about living healthy lifestyles, um, and how to be more aware of your body and the environment around you, um, and therefore preventing either getting cancer in the first place or finding it at an early stage where it's easier to deal with. Uh, and then there's cure, uh, which is about raising money for uh, cancer research. So currently uh, there isn't uh, an understanding of what cancer is, so there is you know, a lot of money raised every year that's put into research in order to find a way that you can stop cancer altogether. Um, so it's a very unknown area, but a lot of telethons today and uh, events uh, sort of revolve around sort of the fundraiser, which is essentially using probably mostly fear marketing uh, as a way to scare you by statistics about the um, uh, existence of cancer. Um, and what we wanted to do differently is we're talking about a very positive message. This is about staying in front of cancer. This is about staying ahead of it. This is stopping it becoming a problem. And therefore, it was very, very positive. Uh, and the thing is, is that our goal was about creating as much awareness for a simple, very, very simple message about keeping your testicles in check. Uh, and therefore, we want to create as much awareness as possible, therefore, as a way of demonstrating anyone that joins our movement to spread this message, the impact they're creating, whether uh, a member of the public, uh, you know, an influencer on YouTube, or a celebrity. We wanted to really show a collective spirit that this is the result of everyone's effort in spreading a life-saving message. So the thing is, this is a free message, and that was our way of, rather than having a money total, it was about having an awareness total. Yeah, yeah, I'll just reiterate that. I think it was it was really kind of a, an innovation on the original telephone um, donation totalizers and it's um, kind of reigniting excitement and interest into what is a very old um, kind of entertainment industry. Um, but just going on, I think the next big thing that Brandwatch Data showed and that what Check One Two found out was that influencers and specifically celebrities were, were very effective at generating this awareness. In fact, on days when influencers joined the Feeling Nuts movement, Check One Two generated on average around 5,200 mentions. This is compared to their normal daily average of mentions of just 861. So days when influencers joined the movement were, were, were six times more successful than others. In fact, these tweets from Ricky Gervais, Hugh Jackman, 
and Stephen Fry generated a combined 2,500 retweets alone. The Brand Watch data reflected this, showing mammoth spikes in mentions as a new celebrity joined. Uh, we were able to break down this data using different metrics in order to understand who the influencers are affecting. So here you can see volume of conversation about the Feeling Nuts campaign over time, but, but, but broken down by gender. So the first three influencers, Connor Maynard, Union J, and Five Seconds of Summer, raised a high majority of female mentions. This wasn't a problem, but ideally we were looking for a 50-50 gender split, so Check One Two began to target celebs with a balanced following. From October onwards, due to the use of different influencers, Hugh Jackman and Neil Patrick Harris specifically, the campaign was actually able to achieve this 50-50 gender split. Uh, now we're going to have a little look at the, the TV show Check One Two hosted. They hosted it to raise awareness for their campaign. and. Maybe it would be good if, if, if you guys could take us through exactly um, what the show is about. Yeah, sure. Well, um, at the very heart of uh, the campaign, it was about galvanizing a digital audience to go out and spread this message and empower people to effectively own it and spread it in their own way. Um, whether that was purely through tweeting it, joining the conversation, or actually going out there and creating some form of entertainment that might entertain their audience and their friends using the hashtag filling and nuts uh, hashtag filling nuts but also maybe injecting essence of how to check or the importance of checking um, and the idea is we wanted to create a destination where we could almost culminate and then celebrate all this awareness that was created and to also bring together some incredible celebrities and entertainers to actually uh, take part in live entertainment on stage as part of stand-up um, or um, being part of sort of BTs and sketches uh, to further spread the message. So therefore anyone uh, that joined the campaign before the television event felt an essence of recognition and uh, achievement that their movement had landed itself on a big television spot on Channel 4. Uh, but also anyone joining the movement at the start of the Channel 4 show uh, um, got an essence of why the movement existed and learnt something as well as being entertained. So, uh, and it was a huge success, massive success for both the broadcaster and the uh, campaign. Yeah, yeah. And, and one of the ways uh, that we were able to show the success, especially with, with this campaign, considering how social it is, is actually by looking at the social data that Brandwatch was able to pick out. So we were able to find that one tweet was posted actually every 1.5 seconds during the show and 75 countries around the world saw, the, saw tweets relating to the show and most significantly the movement had been seen up to 56 million times online um, which is very impressive considering how the show was only aired in the UK. I think it's for you guys, data like this um, helps prove the value of a broadcast in a whole new way. Producers like Check One Two no longer have to base the success of their show on a single metric, which is which is views. Instead, they can assess the show's success on a variety of social metrics. And kind of passing this over to you guys, do you feel that social analysis is now vital to broadcasters, specifically in the non-for-profit sector? Uh Clearly, yeah. I think um, it's really been uh, it's it's been fundamental in us being able to, you know, quantify the success of of, of what we've achieved here. And um, you know, without us having the analytics that we've had through uh, Brand Watch, we would really never have had the the sense of, um, of of where that was leading. And and I think more importantly, I think I'll probably touch upon this in a moment, um, how it uh, actually influenced people's um, behavior and the um, that correlation to uh, searches for cancer during the period that the show was on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, it's just um, having a different type of metric to, to analyze and optimize broadcasts is a real revolutionary step in, in, in the broadcasting industry and especially with a campaign like this, it was great to trial it out and see how effective some of the analysis can be and actually I now would like to introduce kind of a new product feature that we released only last week which is minute by minute charting. Um, it breaks down traditional charts from one hour blocks into 60, 60 minute segments um, and obviously one of the key uses for this feature is naturally TV and advertising. 
tracking and analyzing buzz around specific TV shows, live events, and adverts allows broadcasters to basically analyze success or failure in a whole new way. Um, I mean, research is showing right now that 61% of TV viewers are dual screening. screening. They're using a, a tablet, phone, or laptop whilst watching TV. And as a brand, advertiser, or broadcaster, that's a huge opportunity to take advantage of. So here, here we've, we've, we've used the minute-by-minute -minute charting to, to look at Check 1-2's show. Um, and it's basically showing us five major spikes. What's great about this charting is we can click into every single one of these spikes and analyze what's causing it and what's driving the traffic. So as you can see, the, the first one is the show starting, uh, which caused about 170 unique mentions in just five minutes. The second is One Direction appearing on screen. I'm sure I don't really have to explain why that caused the spike. Uh, the third is, the third, fourth, and fifth, surprisingly, are all caused by influencers tweeting about the campaign. So the third is the uh, Lad Bible, which is a Twitter account of over 1.9 million followers, tweeting support of the TV show, uh, which generated around 500 retweets. The second, the fourth, sorry, is the Sport Bible, um, tweeting support of their show to 800,000 followers, generating a massive uh, 1,000 1, retweets. And the final uh, spike is L Magazine, tweeting support about the show to 2.8 million followers, which generated. Uh, 614 retweets. Another feature included um, in minute by minute charting is the ability to combine this minute by minute data with other brand watch metrics like demographics, sentiment, categories, and topics. This allows us to break down the same data but in unique ways. So here's the same chart, but we've categorized each of the celebrities um, who appeared in the show. Interestingly about this graph, it's actually only looking for mentions of the celebrities with the hashtag feeling nuts. So even though on the night One Direction and Cara Delevingne generated the most mentions, I actually think they both were trending on the night as well as feeling nuts. Um, those mentions actually didn't directly relate to the campaign. Jack Whitehall, despite large, large mentions overall, um, generated the most mentions for the movement itself due to his tweets on his account referencing the movement and promoting the hashtags during the show. Uh, it's really kind of minute by minute data kind of really allows you to uh, an eye-opening look at, at, at which celebrities are causing the, the most spikes, not just in general over the course of the night, but for your campaign. So here again, the final breakdown we've done is the same minute by minute chart for the show, but this time we've separated the genders. So let's go through the spikes again. The start of the show um, generated a relatively balanced male and female engagement. And interestingly, so did One Direction, despite their massive uh, majority female followers. However, the two major spikes caused by Lad Bible and Sport Bible provoked a far higher male conversation. This was partly due to the predominant um, following on those accounts and the contents of the tweets, both of which related to football. Male conversations stayed consistently high during the show until Elle magazine's tweet, which due to their large female following, generated a female spike in chatter. And to just pass this on to you guys, how do you two rate the importance of creating a social media strategy specifically to engage with online audience, online audiences during a, a television show? You know, should more broadcasters be doing it? Yeah, I, I think uh, I think it's definitely going to become something of the future. I think that um, what's really interesting is is that our campaign was entirely built around um, the creation of content and spreading of the message online in advance of the television, and therefore we were able to feature a lot of that as part of the program. Uh, and also anyone that was appearing on the show, including the celebrities, would have done something in advance. So therefore, it didn't feel like they were just promoting or endorsing something. They were part of the process. Um, and I also think that um, what's going to be interesting, what we're doing in the future, is that you know there's an essence of control that the social audience is starting to have. And I think a lot of that comes from the value that they effectively adopt because everyone has an audience today, you know, whether that's, you know, 40, 50 friends uh, or, or, you know, a million subscribers or 10 million followers, um, everyone's being listened to now and therefore they, everyone has value and therefore the way in which they interpret your message, whether creatively or for an opinion, 
uh, has huge value not only to drive viewership to uh, an appointment to view on TV as part of an event, but also can become part of the content of the final program or can help influence and control the resolve as part of the show. You know, very much like shows like, um, uh, you know, American Idol was probably one of the first that really made, or Pop Idol, I should say, effectively created this democratic process where the audience, to a degree, were in control of what actually happened on the television. You know, they were in, uh, in charge of the fate of who would get the fame, who would win the competition through the voting mechanic. And now, with such a big degree, it's not just a yes or a no. Uh, it's now, um, uh, you know, people have more language, more creativity, and therefore that should help now dictate what happens on the television. So that's going to form as a big part of what we are doing in the future with future events and campaigns. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's, it's definitely something to continue doing because your show received great success online and it was clear that what helped it was a lot of the celebrities and influencers on the show all tweeted about it beforehand and you, and you built up this conversation and anticipation for the show and, and your show online definitely benefited from it. Yeah, I mean, we um, in terms of the, the viewership on the night, it was uh, over double what Channel 4 have seen in the last year um, in that slot. And it was the most viewed program on that Friday night between the ages of 16 and 25, which showed you that we truly did engage an online audience who have over the years disappeared to online over the tradition of television. De definitely, and it, and it's really clear that the, the two have helped one another. So your in engagement online before the show definitely helped um, provide that brilliant stat that is double the viewership that Channel Four usually receive, and and also your your promotion during the broadcast to 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 go and get people to tweet about it has also caused you know great amounts of conversation online. And I think this is actually a nice segue to kind of the one of the real points that we want to make during this webinar. Um, so basically, although we spent the majority of our time analyzing just the Feeling Nuts campaign, we also tracked conversation about testicular cancer that was unrelated to the movement. But we did this to learn if general conversation about testicular cancer was affected by Check One Two's campaign. Were people actually checking them, talking about checking themselves more? The real, real standout stat from this is, is yes. Brandwatch was able to show that over the course of three months, and when we started tracking the campaign to the day of the show, online conversation about testicular cancer had steadily increased. More impressively, however, during the show, mentions of testicular cancer unrelated to the campaign had gro grown eight times higher than the weekly average. Check One Two had really kind of accomplished something truly exceptional. Um, when other charities host television events like this, they don't manage to achieve their goals for months, if, if not years after reinvesting donations. Check one, two, realize their goals on the night. RSPCA, for example, don't actually care about the amount of donations they receive. They really care about uh, the amount of animals they can help. Check one, two have kind of taken this to its extreme by taking out the monetary side of the campaign, focusing only on the goals, stopping needless testicular cancer deaths. Their revolutionary social media strategy combined with Brandwatch's um, ability to to measure and optimize has really caused a symbolic increase in testicular cancer awareness. And I want to ask you guys now, is this really the way for non-for-profit organizations that they all need to upgrade their strategies from the old telephone donation-based movements to real-time engaged social campaigns? Um, it's, 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 it's a good question. Um, it's difficult to fault what telephones are doing. Um, Comic Relief have really obviously mastered it um, and there's a nice simplicity to it and the thing is is that they are raising money, uh, they're not, uh, they're, there's not a priority to change behaviour as such uh, and therefore the way in which they do it on the ground as part of the television event as well is massive success and they continue to raise a, a lot of money and they're taking it to America for the first time I think with NBC next year. Um, I think that the uh, the only thing that I've seen that's really uh, done a huge difference and used social media uh, is uh, the ice bucket challenge. 
very different to what our goals were, very different to what we were about. Um, but it happened to use social media purely and raise a lot of money. I think a lot of that was down to a lot of celebrity engagement, uh, which generated huge amount of views, which probably resolved uh, and resulted in a lot of money being raised. Um, I think the thing is, is what we did was very different. Uh, our hashtag was the very thing we wanted people to do. It was called feeling nuts. We wanted people to feel their nuts. Um, anyone engaging in the campaign was talking about testicular cancer. They weren't really talking about anything but. Uh, whereas I think uh, a lot of campaigns that do go online and news celebrity, uh, more of the conversation seems to be resolved around what, uh, who's doing what, what celebrities are involved as such. So I think uh, what we've done on, we've gone out and we've not made it about money, we've made it about what social media should be about and that's raising awareness and changing behavior and using the value and the currency of likes and retweets and share sort of content creation. Um, and I think that will sort of set the bar to a new height. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's probably a lot more that's going to happen as a result of that. And um, I think that probably our campaign and the bucket challenges help probably shine a light on what can be done and achieved online. You know, any organization that has any kind of awareness element, especially if it's preventative in some way, almost has an obligation really to explore all of this because it's it's very low cost and you know driven with the right data it's you know you can have profound uh, results and we have you know I have to say we, we never expected it to be this successful we never imagined we've reached this many eyeballs and and you know it's a huge huge credit to the support we've had from Brandwatch that we got there and we were able to um, you know carve our way through this entire campaign and you know information is is just so powerful and I really hadn't sort of seen anything quite as comprehensive and insightful as um, what you've been able to um, you know supply us and the support that has been just second to none so um, I think yeah the, you know I, I think any organization who has an awareness or preventive development really needs to be looking at this I think it's the live data everything that I've recently been shown on the light the minute by minute data is is phenomenal and I think not just about you know it's it, it's all very well looking back at things retrospectively and making sense of things. But being out, if you know, if you have an event, if you have a show, um, you know, if you have a campaign, um, you know, being able to monitor that in the moment is is hugely powerful. Um, and not only that, I think being able to use the underlying data, and I can see without saying too much, I can see how we will in the future be able to use that underlying live minute by minute data to drive certain elements within the show itself um, to make it more compelling, to make it feel more live and more engaged with the audience. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, every time I come back to this and every conversation you and I feel seem to have, there's, there's more and more possibilities. And I think, um, again, you know, just all credit to everything that Brian, what you've been able to supply us. Yeah, d d definitely. And I think we we feel the same at our end. I think it's a real privilege to work with a an organisation as innovative as you guys are in social. And actually, it's a great segue into this, which is the future. And I think it's very clear for us that that we can continue working with you guys in the future due to your constant commitment to innovation. But one of the great things we've been able to do is. Um, kind of use the data we've collected on you to try and maybe shape the course of your future. As we know, I know you guys can't talk too much about this, but we have been able to find that 40% of global mentions come from the States and the use of prominent US stars like Neil Patrick Harris, um, despite no concentrated effort in the US market, have caused significant spikes. And yeah, I, I know you guys can't say much on this, but would you be able to talk a little bit about your plans for the next coming year and, and how important a social media strategy is to those plans? Yeah, um, I guess somewhat. We are the, 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 the okay, well, the feeling nuts um, uh, has effectively inspired a whole new way of thinking. Um, what I was saying in the beginning of this call uh, was about the importance of prevention and awareness around prevention. Uh, cancer across all cancers. Uh, what is a very, very interesting fact 
is that 90 to 95 percent of cancers are caused by lifestyle uh, and environment uh, which I think five to ten percent is hereditary so it says a lot about the way in which we live our lives and what we're exposed to therefore the world of social media where it is a very democratic uh, playing field uh, and where it truly is uh, a, uh, a very very powerful voice is we are not raising money we aren't dealing with the cure there's many many organizations doing that um, through many different formats and television formats like the telethon like stand up to cancer do already as well in the states um, so we're going to be doing um, something that is about being in check for your health uh, not just in check for your nuts that was our feeling nuts campaign which is going out internationally um, and you've actually helped us identify the countries that we're taking it to uh, based on your uh, help in realizing the countries that most engaged with the campaign, um, one of which is America. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to be doing a, a much, much bigger version of what we did in the UK in America. Uh, it's going to involve sport, uh, it's going to involve comedy and music. In the UK, it was purely about comedy. Um, uh, it's going to be a big television event. Um, and what I can say is that the digital uh, mechanic and the campaign we've created which has entirely uh, never been done before it's, an, it's a world's first uh, for entertainment uh, world's first for social media and television uh, is all about how can we give a very simple goal uh, built around a message to empower um, the world of social media to use that message and spread it uh, measure the, the impact of that, the way in which it's spread, um, and then create a process um, in which we can reward people that were part of that, um, and also let that influence um, the rewards that they receive. Um, it's going to be absolutely massive, and there are, there are very big, big partners, including yourselves, involved in pulling that off. Uh, so it's really, really exciting. Um, there was, I guess, a gentle nudge of it uh, in the Feeling Nuts campaign, um, but it was very well received on a recent trip to America, so uh, we're very excited about it. Yeah, yeah, it it's definitely sounds very excited. I know, well, I, I sure am here, very excited to kind of continue this movement with you. Um, so to, to sum up, because we don't have too long, so we'll only have a time to answer one or two questions. Um, we really think that the, the Feeling Nuts campaign has, has kind of done something extraordinary here. They've, they've changed the traditional orthodox way, awareness-based organizations work and, and, and turned it on its head, creating a new way to, to basically prevent disease through social media awareness, which is really a, a truly commendable feat. Um, so we're just going to go on to a few of the questions now. And um, Isabel has asked, uh, hi guys, do, how do Brandwatch know the gender of followers? Um, Isabel, we basically uh, crawl and track the bios that each of the um, tweeters give. So we are able to track the name of the Twitter account. So, for example, um, we'll put in a load of names to a system, one of which will be Isabel, and we'll um, assign that to female gender. So if you tweet from an account with the name Isabel or other, many other, many other female names, you'll get assigned to the female gender. Obviously, for organizations um, who have Twitter accounts and, and other Twitter accounts that aren't named with human names uh, we won't track we won't track them as a gender so they'll just be left unneutral um, I think we have we have one more question uh, Christian actually asks and this is more for you guys um, why did you look for a social listening platform to measure the success of your campaign and why was it important to the movement we set out um, sort of three major goals. Um, one was to uh, effectively create as much awareness as possible because the fact is the, the, the message was life-saving. So we knew if it was heard, it could save people's lives. Uh, and therefore, we wanted people to realize as part of joining the social movement, the impact they were creating, the impact being the awareness and therefore having uh, a totalizer of that front and center of our website and something that can be talked about in the press uh, was hugely important. Um, the idea of engaging a whole country um, was another goal um, and we, I guess we engaged the world 
Um, so it was a way to show how many people we engage with and uh, in terms of a population. I think we set out a goal of engaging, uh, I think, 50 million eyeballs. And I think we did over 750 million. Uh, so we're, <laughs> we've sort of outperformed ourselves a little bit. Um, uh, and then the other thing was, uh, could we get uh, a, I guess the biggest challenge we faced is we were talking about a problem that was hugely embarrassing. Um, a lot of people were very naive about, which was testicular cancer. Guys don't talk about their health, let alone talk about their testicles. Um, and therefore, we wanted to break down barriers of embarrassment, fear, and naivety and make it uh, a conversation people could talk to their friends, their family about, and people talked about it online. So we are effectively uh, removing quite a significant taboo. Um, so that's why the social listening tool was... Um, hugely important if not the most important part brilliant um and i know we're tight for time here so i think i'll bring it to an end so thank you simon and andrew for joining uh, it was really great to to share some of the work that, that we've been doing